Hello. So in this video, we're going to be doing algebra with functions. Um, so basically, this is mostly a notational thing. Um, it's not, uh, I don't think it'll be too big of a conceptual leap. But we've actually seen already that we can treat functions, um, the output of functions, sort of like its own variable, right? So what we saw when we did, um, or in composition of functions we have or will see, depending on the order of videos, um, that you can take a function and use the function's output as an input for another function, um, basically using it as sort of a uh, go-between variable. Um, but we've also seen in, in other examples, um, so for example, um, you know, building the brick patio, you want to know the sort of cost at the end, and we can assign that some C value. But then we talked about how that's really C of an input, and that input is the, uh, you know, we have the thing, the, the input variable, and then C of that is the, you know, the function, but C is also the variable of cost. So this algebra with functions is basically doing the same idea. So notationally, like I said, this is mostly just a notation video. Um, I'll do some examples to show. But notationally, we can talk about adding, subtracting, multiplying, and dividing functions. And when we do that, we write it sort of like how we do with composition, where we do um, the actual function names and then um, the, the variable applied to. So for example, we would do something like f plus g, where this is an honest, just straight up add sign, applied to x. And what we mean by that when we write this is that we take the function f applied to x and we add the function g applied to x. So we have f of x plus g of x. So this is what we would call a pointwise definition. Um, not that you need to know that for this class, but this is what we're doing. We're saying, okay, f plus g as a thing, right? This is, this is a function, but this function as a function is really just applying each of them separately to my input and then adding the result. Likewise, we do the same idea for subtraction. So f minus g applied to x is the same as f of x minus g of x. f times g, and I'm going to be very sort of careful here to note that this is a, a multiply sign, not the composition open circle, right? So this is, um, maybe I'll write this off to the side in a different color, this is not the same as f of g applied to x. So this really is a, a closed circle, meaning the actual multiplication, not composition. Make sure you're drawing that distinction. And again, it's done the same way, f of x, g of x, where this is multiplying. Now, the last one we're going to do has a small little footnote attached to it. So we can do f divided by g of x, uh, sorry, f divided by g of x. And this is, again, exactly as you would expect, f of x divided by g of x. But we always have that ever-present issue where we don't want to be dividing by 0, right? So we actually have to note that if g of x not equal to 0. Because it's certainly true that if g were equal to 0, this would be a problem. But g of, f, g of x and f of x on their own would be perfectly fine, right? There's nothing wrong with g as a function equaling 0 sometimes. It's just that if I'm trying to divide, if I'm trying to do f divided by g, then that becomes an issue, right? So it's possible to have two perfectly nice functions, and you can do all these other things with them perfectly well, but division ends up being a problem in a bunch of places because the bottom might be 0, which would be otherwise fine, but not when we're dividing, right? So this really is all there is to it. Um, so the notation, these are all what we would call pointwise definitions. Again, you don't, you don't need that phrase for this class. But um, we talk about adding, subtracting, multiplying, not the same as composition, and dividing. And they work exactly as you would expect. You basically just use each you know, thing, like f minus g is f of x minus g of x. Right? You apply it to the thing separately. So let me give some examples. And in fact, let me. Um, 
do some color coordination to make this maybe easier. Well, easier to understand, not easier to write. <laughs> um, so let's say we have f of x is um, x squared plus 3x minus 1. And let's say g of x is um, x minus 5. Okay, so let's go through the various types. So if I wanted to do, let's say, I'm going to write out all, all these. Well, I don't know how much space I'll need. Maybe I'll get rid of this. So let's say I'm doing f. G, and we're going to add. Okay. So what is that? That is simply f of x plus g of x. Okay. So f plus g applied to x, this is f of x, right, f applied to x, plus g applied to x. Now, it is always a good idea to put stuff in parentheses when you do this first substitution. And in fact, when students do things wrong, it's almost never this part. It's almost always the um, distributing negatives if needed, especially when you're doing subtraction. So. Very good idea on the first step. Put stuff in parentheses, brackets, whatever, just so you can um, make sure that distributing works out correctly. And um, that way you can you know, make sure everything stays where it should. So um, I'm going to give myself some room here. So the first thing is f of x. So f of x is x squared plus 3x minus 1. And the second thing is g of x. So this is x minus 5. So at this point, I've, I'm done in the sense that I have done the f plus g part. I've, I've written out the correct f plus g. Obviously, in practice, I want to actually you know, um, simplify this. right? So at that point, I can simplify this by saying, OK, do I need to do any distributing? Here I don't, because you know, distrib distributing the addition doesn't change things. Um, so I can just combine like terms. So I have x squared plus 3x plus x, right? So that's 4x minus 1 minus 5 is minus 6. OK, so this is sort of the final simplified answer. So I'll do the next one, um, which will show one of the potential da dangers, the pitfalls. So this is going to be the difference applied to x. So same, same sort of setup. I'm going to do f minus g applied to x, which is really doing f of x minus g of x. Right, so that's the that's the definition, right? Again, always a good idea to use parentheses. So I'm going to do the same idea, right? So f of x, that's the first thing. So I get same same deal, x squared uh, plus three x minus one, and g of x was x minus five. But now I do have a negative. So when I distribute the negative, this is really going to become minus x plus 5. So I'm going to end up with x squared plus 3x minus 1. Nothing there went weird. But now I'm going to have minus x minus minus 5. So I'm going to get minus x plus 5. Now I can put together right like terms, so I'm going to get x squared plus 3x minus x is plus 2x 
minus one plus five is plus four. Okay. All right. Next up, I'm going to look at. Uh, so to be clear, this is the final simplified answer for that. Um, oops, trying to maintain my color coordination here. So if I have f uh, multiply this time, brain is suddenly trying to desert me here. So again, close dot here, applied to x. I'm just going to be multiply there to be clear. All right, so I'm going to do f times g, which is really f of x times g of x. Okay. Again, as always, I'm going to have my brackets here multiplying. I'm writing brackets first just because that way I can use the same color. Obviously, you can write left to right like a normal human and not worry about it, but it's easier for my color coordination. Um, so my f then is x squared uh, plus 3x minus 1. My g is x minus 5. So here now, um, things get a little more interesting, right? Because here, I have to distribute everything. So this is a good example because a lot of times when people don't um, write it out with parentheses or more often they'll write just the second one with parentheses because they're used to this kind of situation. If they did that here, they get minus one, right? Like this stuff over here wouldn't be there. So they'd have minus one times this and they just distribute the negative one instead of distributing all of it, right? So that would be bad. So here, um, the best way to distribute this, and we'll cover this again later in polynomials as well, um, but we want to do what's called a general distribution. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to distribute this whole thing as if it were a single thing, like a single number or something, to each term in the second one. So I'm going to have x squared plus 3x minus 1 times the first element, the first thing, x plus, and then this thing again, x squared plus 3x minus 1 times negative 5. Okay? And then I'm going to distribute each, I'm going to distribute this x to each term and the negative 5 to each term and expand everything out. So I'm going to get x times x squared is x cubed. 3x times x is 3x squared. Minus 1 times x is minus x plus, and then over here, negative 5. So this is going to be negative 5x squared, negative 15x. Right, so that's negative 5x times, uh, negative 5 times 3x. And negative 1 times negative 5 is plus 5. And last but not least, putting together all like terms. So this is the only cube. I have a plus 3x squared minus 5x squared. So it's going to be minus 2x squared. I have a minus x minus 15x, so that's minus 16x, and plus 5. And so this would be my final uh, simplified or expanded out um, solution for that. Okay. Last but not least, uh, if I want to look at, I can probably just do this over here. Um, so I'll do it, yeah, over here. So if I want to look at uh, f over g applied to x, so here I would have f divided by g applied to x, and that's really just. Uh, f of x divided by g of x, which, when I write it out, I'm going to get, right, so I just replace the things with what they are, just like before. 
Here, um, the parentheses are less imperative only because they're sort of inherent in being either in the top and bottom. So here, my f of x is still x squared plus 3x minus 1. And my bottom is g of x. That's still x minus 5. And for now, this is um, as simple as we're going to talk about having it. So be an example of a rational function. We'll be studying these really toward the end. Um, but that is algebra with functions in a nutshell. So we do plus, minus, multiply, divide, right? So addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. But they work pretty much how you would expect. You just apply them individually, substitute, and simplify. Um, again, with the sort of caveat here that these parentheses are really where people tend to go astray. So make sure you put brackets, parentheses, whatever around them so that you correctly distribute uh, negatives or just in general. Um, and otherwise, that is all there is to it.